Welcome back to another FPL video. This will be the team selection for Gimmick 24, where I'll discuss how I did in Gimmick 23 and talk about my transfer plans for the upcoming deadline and also briefly discuss Double Gimmick 25, the blank gimmicks in 26 and 29. And we got confirmation yesterday of a Double Gimmick in 28 for Bournemouth and Luton Town. All of that will be covered in this video. The same goes for the repercussions of the Aston Villa versus Chelsea game in the FA Cup and what that means for Blank Gimmick 29. Smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this video to the 200 likes and if we do so there's going to be a deadline stream tomorrow because I will be traveling this weekend but the aim is to get some UCL Fantasy and FPL content out on the channel regardless. But without further ado let's jump straight into this video. Goalkeepers have been a nightmare this season and Dubravka is no exception. Since he's come into the team in Gimmick 15, that's only one clean sheet for Newcastle which came against Fulham who went down to 10 men. So Newcastle have been shocking defensively and Nick Pope has been a massive miss. Now Dubravka himself has been doing quite well in terms of his own performances. He's making a lot of saves. He also got a massive fall against Liverpool despite conceding multiple goals at Anfield. But he's not getting the FPL points due to a sheer lack of clean sheets and it's a big concern. If you are wild carding you could definitely consider going in a different avenue but the problem is Newcastle have great fixtures up until gimmick 32 and it's ideal to spend a minimal amount in the goalkeeper position especially this season with a lack of clear standouts and favorites Pickford is currently the highest scoring goalkeeper in FPL and Allison is just behind him and I would expect Allison to score the most points from now until the end of the season and to claim top spot but you'd probably want to use your other Liverpool spots on other positions and especially when Salah comes back but with Dubravka he's in here for now he still is decent value at his price but the clean sheets still need to rack up otherwise he could be on the chopping block very soon. My defence has been woeful this week and it's not the first time I have said that Alexander Arnold got one point against Arsenal. He came off early just before 60 minutes, but Liverpool went on to concede three goals. So it's pretty much the same result. He was kind of destined to get a one pointer from that game, but it's very frustrating owning Trent in recent weeks. He also got zero points against Newcastle. Then he got injured, missed out against Bournemouth on a clean sheet. And also Connor Bradley got an assist in that game. And then in the following match against Chelsea, Connor Bradley in Trent's position got 21 points whilst Trent came on for a one-pointer. I still think it's worth holding on to Trent if you have him for Burnley at home and the double gimmick in 25. But going into blank gimmick 26, I certainly think Trent is in cell territory when we get to that blank game week. The same goes for Pedro Borro, who has produced two one-pointers in a row. And similar to Trent with Connor Bradley, it's a doggy getting the attack and returns instead of Pedro Borro. So that's been very frustrating as well. And Spurs are in the bottom three for expected goals conceded over the entire season. And that is very worrying. They have slightly overperformed due to Vicario and also some decent defending from individuals like Mickey van der Ven. But it's not sustainable and Spurs leak so many chances due to the way they play. And they're very exciting to watch. But from time to time, they need to rein it in. You saw it against Chelsea, for example, when Spurs went down to 10. 10 men then later to nine men and they still kept on playing the same way that can be very frustrating and also very concerning for those that own Pedro Porro or any Spurs defender maybe some of you might own Vicario as well and that issue will only be more prevalent because at least with Pedro Porro and Odogi you can get the occasional attack and returns and some bonus points the final defender is Estupinian, another attacking fullback who has been very frustrating recently. And just like Trent, he's had his minutes managed in recent weeks. Estupinian was subbed off at halftime against Luton Town as Brian went on to concede four. And then in the following match against Crystal Palace in Gimmick 23, Estupinian was on the bench. And the hope is that he's having his minutes managed because he just came back from injury. But if he is benched against Tottenham, that is a major cause for concern. And Estupinian could enter cell territory. The same goes for Trent in Gimmick 26 and Pedro Porro either in game at 25 or 26 because Pedro Porro blanks but at least the kind of shining light with the Spurs assets is that they have a game in blank game at 29 against Fulham and that's maybe a reason why you should hold on to the likes of Pedro Porro but with Estupinian if he just continues to be benched it's going to be a major headache and he's just simply not worth the money but as discussed in the transcripts video be sure to check that out I talk about holding Estupinian but all three of these defenders are definitely not worth investing in right now maybe Trent because of the double in 25 and Burnley at home Home in 24 but with recent form in mind and the injury situations I think these three defenders are definitely sellable in the next few weeks.
Things were much better in the midfield with Saka scoring yet again and getting two bonus points against Liverpool. He started things off with the early goal. And what I like about him recently is that he's getting into goal scoring positions. You saw against Nottingham Forest and now once again against Liverpool. He got that tap in with Kai Havertz's shot being originally saved by Alisson. But Saka was there to tuck it home. And you want to see that more often from Saka because typically he's hogging the touchline and holding the width on the right hand side. And whilst he's constantly creating chances and he's got 58 key passes for the season. Season, you want to see him get into more central areas and also into the box to have more goal scoring opportunities on a regular basis and I think if he continues to do this he's going to be a great FPL asset until the rest of the season. Next up is Cole Palmer who got eight points against Wolves. He still got a bonus point despite the fact that Chelsea got thrashed at home 4-2 and he actually was on course for two bonus points but Thiago Silva's late goal pit Palmer towards two bonus points but either way it's still a decent return from him now the issue is Palmer faces Man City in gimmick 25 blanks in 26 and following the FA Cup result between Aston Villa and Chelsea Chelsea are really likely to blank in gimmick 29 as well so Palmer could be a sell in the next few weeks but I'd certainly try hold on to him against Crystal Palace away in gimmick 24 next up is Phil Foden, who was the star of the show, with a hat-trick against Brentford. 20 points. Some people did sell him, and I do sympathise with you. Some of you might have gone to Kevin De Bruyne, and other moves might have been understandable as well. Even some of you might have benched Phil Foden, and that's the problem with having eight attackers. Inevitably, you will have some bench points, but to this degree, of course, can lead to some huge frustrations, that's for sure. But I've said in the last couple of months that Foden is a good FPL asset. If you checked out my recent Transtips videos, I talked about buying Foden all the way back in Gaming 20, I bought him around that time and he's been really good ever since and typically for me personally he's good for me in UCL fantasy but in FPL he's a bit of a troll but this season he has changed things and he's now as nailed on as ever as he's ever been throughout his Premier League career. Now the final midfielder was Anthony Gordon who also returned but picked up an injury and was subbed off at half time and I actually sold Gross to Gordon so I lost out on seven points due to that transfer and maybe I should have just held on to Gross and have two free transfers heading into game 24 but I didn't do so and I wanted to go for Gordon based on the next three fixtures and the recent reports indicate that Gordon should be fine and that it's nothing too serious but there's no guarantee that he will start in game 24 against Nottingham Forest but either way my original plan was to bench him in this upcoming game week let's see what the latest injury updates are and if we get any information before the deadline but overall it's a really good showing from my midfield every single one of them returned but that gross to Gordon transfer did leave a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. It has been ages since I played a 3-4-3 and Solanke did blank. He was the only forward for me to have blanked and he was very ineffective. He was actually very close to being my final captain against Nottingham Forest. He scored a hat-trick against them just a couple of months ago, but this time round he was very ineffective and quiet and I'm very glad I didn't go for the captaincy on Solanke. Otherwise, that would have been yet another captaincy flop this season. Next up was the most popular captain, Erling Haaland, with five points. He looked quite rusty, but his XGI was around one against Brentford, so the underlying numbers were very promising, and he got that assist to complete Phil Foden's hat-trick, and Haaland, for me, is a great captaincy option against Everton, and also he's in triple captaincy territory in double gimmick 25 with two home games against Chelsea, and Brentford. The final forward was Ollie Watkins, one of the best options in Gimmick 23. He got 18 points with one goal and three assists. He has been really consistent this season. That's now 11 goals and 14 FPL assists for the campaign. He is just on fire. And he might be frustrating from time to time. Some of you might have sold him in the last couple of weeks. And whenever I've sold him, I've been burned big time. And actually, the difference between my season and having a good one is probably due to selling Watkins at the wrong time on two occasions, particularly the first time, which I don't really want to go into too much. But Watkins is just a season keeper, in my opinion. I know you've got Darwin and Tony doubling in Gimmick 25. You've also got Solanke doubling in Gimmick 28. But I still think Watkins is the second best forward in FPL. And only Erling Haaland is better to own from now until the end of the season. Let's now move on to my rank and talk about the points I got in Gimmick 23 and also the captaincy. You'll see who I captain in the end. I made a late change from the team selection video and overall it worked quite well, although I didn't captain Watkins or Phil Foden to really nail down that captaincy as I'm looking to do in the next few weeks. I ended a run of three consecutive red arrows with 78 points this week and I went 
up around 100,000 places from 678,000 to 576,000. So a decent green arrow, which would have been even bigger if I didn't sell Gross to Gordon. But my main gripe was buying Gross in the first place when the likes of Richarlison and Jota were even better choices. But sometimes when you look too far ahead and when you think about other things, it can lead to just ignoring the points right in front of you. So I bought Gross over those two players simply because of budget and it allowed me to do Archer to Haaland, which I did in Gimmick 23 finally and also because Richarlison and Jota blanked in gimmick 26 and we still didn't have confirmation of Liverpool doubling in 25 up until the Saturday deadline last week for gimmick 23 so as you can see when you kind of take other things into account it can lead to you just ignoring things right in front of you and looking at the medium to long term instead and that could lead to some points lost but either way I've made my bed I've got some transfer to make in Game Week 24, which I'll discuss now in the next section. I did Captain Palmer, so a decent captaincy haul, and I was very close to changing the captaincy to Haaland late on, and I'm glad I didn't do it and follow the crowd, and I went for something a bit different instead. But let's see if I end up captaining Haaland, as many of you are going to do, or if I'm going to go for something different in Game Week 24. So let's now discuss the team selection for the upcoming deadline, and I'm looking to make one transfer this week. I don't have much of a choice in goal. I'm going for Dubravka over Ariola, who faces Arsenal at home, whilst Dubravka is away to Nottingham Forest. I don't expect a clean sheet for either team, but in terms of clean sheet odds, it would still favour Newcastle, and that's why I'm going for Dubravka between the sticks. But Newcastle have the worst expected goals conceded over the last eight game weeks, and even last six, last four. No matter what you say, if you include the Liverpool game or not, where they conceded seven XG, Newcastle have been shocking defensively, and that's the bottom line of it. But I'm going for Dubravka. Bravka. Ariola is a consideration still because he did very well at the Emirates last time out but I'm expecting Arsenal this time round to score a couple of goals and to put things right because they really should have scored two or three at the very least in the last meeting between Arsenal and West Ham. So Dubravka is in it for now but it's also worth mentioning that Nottingham Forest went to St James's Park and won 3-1 only recently. My back three looks much better this week and I'm expecting Trent Alexander-Arnold to start against Burnley and to also play more than 60 minutes and even if he subbed off around let's say 70 or 80 the hope is they can bank a clean sheet and maybe some bonus points as well and I'm expecting him to do very well over the next two gamings but my main concern is that Liverpool have that Carabao Cup final just a couple of days after double gimmick 25 so rotation is certainly possible but Canate is suspended now against Burnley at home and I think Trent is still going to start two of the next three Premier League games but my hope is that he starts all three before I eventually sell him around blank gimmick 26. The next defender is Pedro Porro but I have to say I'm a bit tempted to make a move such as Porro to Doughty who has Sheffield United at home in gimmick 24 and has a double in gimmick 25 and not only that he has a double in 28 against Crystal Palace away and Bournemouth away so Doughty is a very good way of covering most of the blanks and doubles and he could also feature in blank gimmick 29 and that could only boost his appeal even further but at least with Porro you do have a confirmed fixture in blank gimmick 29 but the lack of clean sheets is very worrying his attacking potential is also being slightly diminished with the return of James Madison and it's been a doggy who's getting the attack and returns recently compared to the Spaniard and that has been even more frustrating to say the least the last defender is Saliba I'm not going for a Stupinian away to Tottenham but instead I'm going for Saliba away to West Ham and I don't really expect a clean sheet here for Arsenal and West Ham haven't won a single game in this calendar year but they've also gotten the better of Arsenal in recent meetings they were 2-0 down last season then managed to come back and ever since that point I think West Ham have found a way to get results against Arsenal they beat them in the Carabao Cup 3-1 and they also beat them at the Emirates in the Premier League a 2-0 victory and whilst Arsenal had 30 shots 5 Five big chances they really should have won that game but West Ham were clinical they are missing Lucas Paqueta now and the hope here is that Arsenal can keep a clean sheet because Jared Bowen is still on the chopping block despite the Aston Villa and Chelsea result which means that West Ham will feature in blank gimmick 29. I've talked about buying this player for some time and I'm now finally going to get round to it and that is Diogo Jota. I should have bought him instead of Gross originally. I didn't and I missed out on some points in the process but Diogo Jota at home to Burnley and having a doubling game at 25, he's worth it. Even 
just for a two gimmick period then you can sell him in blank gimmick 26 and after that it's not in forest in gimmick 27 man city in gimmick 28 and a very likely blank in gimmick 29 but i think the play with these liverpool players is to buy them now get two or three for double gimmick 25 start trimming them down from blank gimmick 26 onwards and if you're looking to wildcard later in the season you can buy them back in around gimmick 30 or 31 using the wildcard and i think jota is one of the best picks in the midfield over the next two game weeks next up is Palmer away to Crystal Palace? If I had the funds, I would be looking to sell Palmer because it's very unlikely he will feature in blank gimmick 29 after Chelsea won 3-1 against Aston Villa yesterday in the FA Cup fourth round replay. And Chelsea also blanking gimmick 26. And in double gimmick 25, they face Man City away. So it's not looking good for these Chelsea assets, but Palmer is the only one that I'd be considering to keep because of his price and also how consistent he has been throughout the course of this season. Next up in the midfield is Phil Foden, and he's one of the best players over double gimmick 25. And in the next couple of weeks, of course, he's got Bournemouth away in blank gimmick 26. And this week, he's got Everton at home, and he's got a decent record against the Toffees. So I think Foden is a decent pick, and I've always said this even before his hat-trick against Brentford, but now he's going to be very popular. And as I mentioned a few days ago, before that hat-trick against Brentford, Foden had more transfers out than in heading into the upcoming deadline line and also heading into the Burnley game just a few weeks ago he was the third most transferred out player over the entire week which is quite crazy when you think about it but Foden he is least effective playing on the right hand side I like it when he plays in the center and against Brentford he scored a hat trick on the left hand side so as long as he doesn't play on the right I think Foden is a good FPL asset and could also be maybe not a season keeper but you can keep him up until game week 29 where Man City are almost certain to blank in that game week the final midfielder is Saka so the current plan is to sell Bowen and keep Saka but as I mentioned a few times throughout this video Arsenal versus Chelsea is very unlikely to go ahead in blank gimmick 29 so if Chelsea beat Leeds United in the FA Cup fifth round that fixture between Chelsea and Arsenal will be a blank but what we did get yesterday in terms of confirmation is that West Ham versus Aston Villa will go ahead in blank gimmick 29 so having West Ham and Aston Villa players is a very good way of navigating blank gimmick 29 if you have any questions or comments be sure to let me know down the comment section below but let's now complete this team with the three forwards my front three is looking strong this week but it's worth mentioning that in terms of double gimmick 25 i've only got one doubler i've got no evan tony or darwin nunez as things stand that could change and i could be open to taking a minus four hit either in gimmick 24 or in 25 but Solanke now has a double in gimmick 28 which I alluded to earlier so Bournemouth and Luton Town that fixture that got postponed a couple of months ago that will now take place in gimmick 28 and that gives Bournemouth a double of Sheffield United at home and Luton Town at home whilst Luton Town will face Crystal Palace away and Bournemouth away for me the best options are Solanke from Bournemouth and Doughty from Luton Town but you can also consider Adebayo from Luton Town even Ross Barkley could be a consideration and from Bournemouth you might be looking at Neto in goal or Senesi in the back line and maybe even Tavernier as a differential midfielder but Solanke for me is by far the best option in that double game week and he's even a triple captaincy option in double game week 28 let me know your thoughts as well on that next up is Erling Haaland I still prefer triple captaining him in game week 25 with two home fixtures against Chelsea and Brentford compared to Solanke and yes Bournemouth's double is better on paper in terms of the fixture quality but I still prefer Erling Haaland as a triple captaincy option compared compared to Solanke. If you disagree, of course, I do encourage you to leave your thoughts as always in the Discord server, my Twitter and Instagram, all the links are in the description below. And the final forward is Ollie Watkins at home to Manchester United. Some of you are looking to sell him to Darwin Nunez and I understand it for a two gimmick period. Then you can sell Darwin to Watkins in gimmick 26. But I think Man United is still a good fixture, especially with Lissandra Martinez set to miss out for the next two months. And I still think Aston Villa are the favourites to win this game. And even if they don't, Watkins can certainly be involved in some goal contributions. But it's worth mentioning that his overall record against Manchester United is quite poor. I think he's only got one goal and one assist against them for his entire career so that could be quite concerning and it might provide another reason or argument as to why you should sell Watkins to Darwin Nunez or Ivan Tony. if you were to make such a move I'd rather go for Tony in the long term I think Darwin is just a short-term pun but for me Watkins is still worth holding on to especially if you're looking to navigate blank gimmick 26 and 29 without using a chip because Watkins will feature in both game weeks with Nottingham Forest at home in 26 and also West Ham in game week 29. So that is my starting 11. Let's now talk about the captaincy and my bench. And then after that, 
I'll be moving on to Draft Hound and FP Lock team to optimize my squad even further. My bench is as follows. Ariola, Gordon, Estupinian and Lascelles. If Gordon is fit against Nottingham Forest away, there is a chance that he is worth starting, but I'm not really too keen on benching one of these seven attackers you see on screen. So I think Gordon will be first on my bench in either scenario. And if I had the funds, I would be looking to sell Palmer in gimmick 25 or even Gordon in gimmick 24. But in terms of buying Jota, it requires selling either Saka, Foden or Bowen and right now I'd rather sell Bowen despite the fact that he features in blank gimmick 29 against Aston Villa at home but that is my starting 11 and in terms of the captaincy I'm looking to go for Jota. Haaland is my vice it's between those two for the armband and the algorithms do favor Saka against West Ham but I'm not too keen on that and if I had to go a bit different between Jota and Haaland and look beyond those two Foden would be a consideration. Palmer and Solanke, even Watkins is a decent shout, but Jot and Hallen for me are the top two options, period, for our any squad this week, and I'm currently leaning towards Jota, and I'm expecting him to start and get at least 60-70 minutes against Burnley, and you could even argue that Haaland will have his minutes managed against Everton, but I think he will play close to 90 in that game. It's the early kickoff, some of you might be put off by that, but Jota for me, regardless of early kickoffs or not, is the standout captaincy option as things stand, but that could certainly change heading into the deadline. Be sure to check out the deadline stream tomorrow. If this video gets to over 200 likes, there will be one, and you will see my final team. If I were to make any other changes, patrons and channel members will know. I will keep you posted, of course, on those platforms. But let's now move over to Draft Hound and talk about ways that we can optimize my team even further and also discuss the player rankings and using those algorithms to really look at the best options for Gimmick 24. There is a link to Draft Hound in the description below, so be sure to check it out. And they are also recommending some changes to my team. And they're talking about vice captaining Jota and having Haaland as the captain. They've also got Estupinian first on the bench, Gordon second, and Lascelles third. They do change this regularly, and they've got Gordon quite low down in terms of expected points due to his injury situation at the moment. And they're also recommending pretty much the same 11 that I've gone for. The only difference is the bench order and the captaincy. Over the next three game weeks, Foden is top of the player rankings. Alvarez, Haaland, De Bruyne and Jota complete the top five. Then you've got Tony, Saka, Watkins, Diaz and Rodri in the top 10. This is for expected points over the next three game weeks. And Jota and Diaz are right up there despite blanking in game week 26. There's also the fiction analysis. Be sure to check that out. And you've got chance of scoring over two goals and also chance of winning, chance of clean sheets. And as you can see, Man City, Arsenal, Aston Villa, Man United and Brighton are in the top five and Liverpool are quite low down because of blank gimmick 26 but they still favor the likes of Jota as FPL assets but as you can see all the teams that blanking 26 are right down there and it does make sense to be fair in terms of player comparisons it's very easy to create your own and also to see the popular comparison so Foden versus Jota is going to be right up there I actually prefer Jota over the next two game weeks compared to Foden but because of blank gimmick 26 I would rather have Foden at the moment as a longer term purchase but both of them could be sales after blank gimmick 26 especially Jota in that period and then there's the predicted lineups be sure to check that out I think Man City will always be of interest to you but they update it for every single team and you can also check the expected minutes for every single player so check out Draft Town they also have a new feature called player scouting which shows you the expected points over the next five game weeks that's a really handy tool which shows you some good long-term options and it's something they didn't have before on their website and you can gain access to all of these tools for as little as two pounds per week so be sure to check out draft town using my link in the description below but let's now move on to fpl team and discuss the upcoming doubles and blanks this is certainly not set in stone but i'm looking to buy a defender either kyle walker or doughty and i'm currently leaning towards walker because he features in blank gimmick 26 and i can always buy doughty just before double gimmick 28 and luton town could even feature in blank gimmick 29 so Doughty is certainly on my radar and I've been mentioning it even a couple of weeks ago before his really impressive run but Walker is currently one of my proposed transfers in double gimmick 25 and even the likes of Tony and Darwin aren't discounted for either gimmick 24 or 25 but I really like this front three of Haaland, Watkins and Solanke even though Watkins doesn't have any doubles anytime soon and in terms of the chopping block I think Gordon could be one of them even though I just bought him in but in terms of value and also how much much money in the bank I have it is a bit awkward to get to maybe the likes of Bowen in a couple of weeks time when he does feature in blank gimmick 29 and it would require selling Trent and downgrading him and that's something I'm looking to do in double gimmick 26 but this team would look quite solid 
in Double Gimmick 25. It's not going to be the best you ever see. I don't have Ivan Tony. I also don't have a third Liverpool asset, but I've got that triple up in City. No De Bruyne could hurt, of course, but you can't cover everybody. And that's something I learned a long time ago. But in Gimmick 26, which is also very important, I would be looking to make one transfer, potentially Alex Moreno, who covers blank Gimmick 26 and 29 and even a minus four hit or just going for Huang Hee Chan as one of my free transfers maybe in for Cole Palmer that could be the play instead because Wolves face Sheffield United at home in gimmick 26 so the Wolves players will be massive differentials Cunha up front but I'm particularly interested in Pedro Neto and Huang Hee Chan who is now back from the Asian Cup after South Korea were eliminated and that means Hyun Ming Son is going to be an option as soon as Gemic 24 potentially but I'm looking to load up on Spurs players from Gemic 27 and beyond in preparation for blank Gemic 29 so I encourage you to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below about my transfer plans and what are you looking to do to cover blank Gemic 26 and 29 and also the doubles in Gemic 28 and in Gemic 25 and I'm looking to buy Doughty in a couple of weeks time probably in Gemic 27 but I wouldn't even rule out buying him this week and taking a minus four hit and going a bit rogue with some of my transfers thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 23k subscribers and beyond you can follow me on twitter instagram dylan rcm and check all the links in the description below for the patron championships discord server the fpl league and draft hound all of that is there i wish you all the best of luck for gimmick 24 and the rest of the season and I'll see you next time.